Hello guys, thank you for coming back again for day 40 on Rajmuin. Uh, what have I got? Jeez, apparently nothing. Do something about that. I still need lots of supplies. What the heck? Ah, what? What? I could not have gotten through. Oh, jeez, I looked right at it and didn't even didn't even notice. Fine. I'm s I, I'm I, ooh, 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 I can't speak. So make two. And uh put this back. Put some of this back as well. Just in case I have need room. I don't probably I probably don't need room. And put those back. And let's uh Huh. We're still waiting for things to... I don't know. I don't know. It's coming along. That... That is the outer wall. Okay, okay. Ooh, sorry about that. Little... Excuse me. Little spider. So... I owe you guys a topic. And I think I've exhausted the, uh, the UFO business. At least for now. But there are related topics which I might be able to talk about. I could have sworn, though... I could have sworn there was an expanse out here. Exposed blue... There it is. Hey, now, that's not cool. How's about... Bird. Bird, bird, bird. Let's do this. chicken. Oh, oh, related topic. I'm stupid. Uh, let's talk about... Well, in in the first of the three I mentioned the pos... the the interesting... Oh, what am I saying? The interesting fact that the time when we started broadcasting out into space you know, with radio and television and stuff like that, corresponds very well to the time of arrival, supposedly, of alien ships, you know, like the Greys, if this one map that someone showed or drew based on uh, hypnotic regression has anything to say about it. It actually lines up very well, and while it's certainly not proof of anything, it's interesting, okay? And interesting things are interesting, or didn't you know? So, all that said, I thought I'd talk about that in human terms instead, because the fact of the matter is, even though we have not had the political and sociological willpower of late to pursue this, we actually have the capacity to go to the stars. Now, there are many, there are definitely some challenges, absolutely. Um, let me eat. Hey, pig. Hey, pig, pig, pig. So, basically, one obviously, uh, fuel is an issue for us right now because right now that's all we know how to do to propel ourselves. Uh, propel ourselves. Um, we do have, there's been a lot of research into things like uh, solar sails, and that would work. Uh, it would require a lot of patience at first, but it actually can get over time to speeds that are greater than any of our fuels can handle or, or pull off right now. So that's, you know, that's quite nice. Uh, but it's not... Again, it requires patience at first. The total trip time will be less, but the time it takes to build up speed would be quite long. So right there, people would lose interest. Uh, but, you know, you could potentially... Uh, Increase that with the use of lasers. Uh, you know, if you... Uh, let me... Just didn't feel right. But we'll put one down anyways. Okay. Um, the, uh, the use of, like, high-powered lasers pushing those sails out into space would help accelerate that some. Um, there are other techniques. Um, it, things like warp. And not in Star Trek terms, those, the people who have uh, formulated 
working theories of warp, uh, which is not to say testable, um, based their original ideas on Star Trek. So they're actually, it's yet another thing that science fiction can take inspirational credit for. And that's one of the reasons why I'm such a fan of science fiction, uh, is that it's not really about predicting the future, it's about designing it. Uh, anyways, even if it's fuel, well, basically, the to make the trip, if you're going to bring people along, you need supplies. And supplies are heavy. And the heavier your um, supplies, the more fuel you're going to need. And unfortunately, fuel is heavy too. So the more fuel you have, the more fuel you're going to need. It's uh, It becomes actually a very expensive and a relatively short equation. But it is still not exactly beyond our means. So... We could, you know, if you want to get, if you don't want to send people, let's say you'd rather to send a probe. Now, of course, there is a drawback to sending a probe, but let me finish the thought first. Um, you, we probably could get it to. Ah, uh, see, I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to tell you an accurate thing, but within a large fraction of C, so what I'm, and C being the speed of light. So I'm going to guess two-thirds to three-quarters of the speed of light. And I know that sounds like a lot, but it's, it, again, it requires patience and lots of fuel. But if you don't have to send along supplies, then you can send a really small probe that doesn't require anywhere near as much fuel to get where it's going. And then all of a sudden, you know, because, you know, you don't have to have the fuel to, to haul the fuel to haul the fuel to haul the fuel... You know, the equation gets a lot friendlier. However, there, the drawback is... <sighs> Bear with me. One of the nice things about traveling at fractions of the speed of light is this thing called time dilation, where the experience of time changes for those who are doing the traveling. Which is exactly why, if you send a probe off at these speeds, it doesn't really do you that much good because, okay, it can get to off, let's say if you, if you can get three quarters of the speed of light. You can get to Alpha Centauri in, I don't know, five years, five and a half, probably more like ten if you count the time it takes to uh, speed up and slow down, if you, if you want your probe to actually stay in Alpha Centauri and check things out. But... One of the things it can't do is benefit from the time dilation. So, at that speed, if you sent people along, they might only experience four, or maybe if you're if you're talking the full ten years, they might experience seven or eight of those years. So, they wouldn't be as old upon arrival as they would be otherwise. The people on Earth would be three years or four years older than those on the um, on the ship would be. So, by sending a probe, you lose that fringe benefit but still once he's once this probe or once these people were there the communication delay is a four and a half years so well four and a third four and three quarter uh, one quarter years so that's one another reason why you might want to send people instead of a probe unless the probe is autonomous and self-repairing and unfortunately while that is probably within our capacity to accomplish um, it's going to scare people because, I mean, the moment you talk about nanomachines, which are also almost imminent, I mean, we've already developed some of their precursors already. Uh, people start talking about gray goo and they freak out and, and, and stuff like that. And hello, really? Oh, I suppose. Sorry, I'm getting confused. Pig, you're, you're not helping. Keep going down. You know, so... Don't be scared of the idea of a machine that can repair and replace its... Or even replicate itself. And, and actually, if we really are serious about exploring the stars, uh, self-replicating machines are the way to go. But they'll have... You know, those machines will obviously have to... Uh, live by a you know a, a built-in law 
And you, got, you start talking about like you know your Asimov stuff, the your uh, come on, your your laws of robotics and stuff like that. Um, however, once you've got self-replicating machines that can repair themselves and replace themselves and, and expand themselves, and their whole business is to, to explore. Hello, apparently I've been down here too. Uh, hmm. I'm going to have to put something here to make sure I measure correctly. Yeah, that looks right. At the first few generations of this machine will not explore that much. And at first people, you know, sadly human beings are not well known for their long-term vision. Um, it's possible. I mean, humans can have long-term vision. It's just the average person doesn't bother developing that skill. Because it doesn't really affect their lives much. Um, well, actually it does, but that's sort of another argument. Uh, which we can get into some other day. Mm -hmm, let's go down. Okay, so I'm further down than I thought. I'd rather not expend... Why can't I put something there? That's strange. Why can't I put something there? Weird. Hmm. Sorry, folks. So distractible. Definitely distractible. Very good. Do I need this one? No. no. I seem to have a way up, so let's go. Let's do a little bit down here. Anyways, uh, let's assume, though, for the moment that we can... We, we do have the fuel and the willpower to uh, send people along. Well, all of a sudden, even though they can't go the speed of light, but they can only go sort of close. And it's, it's, a, it's a little bit threatening down here. Then that you get to take a, uh, advantage of that whole time dilation business. Um, especially, you know, if you get to 90, 95% of C, you're shaving most of their experience of travel off for them see it's not it's not exactly corollary and i do not know the equation to figure this out though it has i think been demonstrated as true um in experiments with satellites but you know when you're talking 95 98 99 percent you can go very far it doesn't matter the fact that your your ship really actually requires you know, uh, was it 16 years to get to Altair? Those on board my own experience too, and so all of a sudden, human human spaceflight becomes more feasible. It's just you know the fuel or the uh, the energy output to get them there, and then how do they slow down when they start to arrive? Otherwise, they'll just sail right through the system and maybe you know impact something uh, if they're unlucky. Oh, oh, here we go. Okay, man. I need a bucket of water. So I'm not being terribly cohesive, but it's just the thought of spaceflight is not, especially human spaceflight, is not. Ooh! <gasps> diamonds, diamond, 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 diamond! Diamond, diamond, diamond! Look at that! Is that poisonous water? I think it is. Yes. 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 It's about time. Have I had access to redstone thus far? I got four. That's not bad. I should probably build a cobble road so I don't get lost down here. Ooh, see, I'm glad I checked that. <sighs> Jeez. I definitely, definitely got to get out of here. Okay. All right. Gold? Did I come from this way? Yeah. There it is. All right. So, yeah, human spaceflight is within our capability now. There are certain other challenges. Like I said, you got to bring supplies, 
and you've got to shield them from radiation, and that that is going to be tough because it requires heavy shielding or the ability to generate a strong local magnetic field, such as the Earth has, that actually deflects most radiation around the Earth. Um, it's obviously not enough because some gets through, uh, you know, like ultra UVC and UVA and UVB it doesn't get through the atmosphere, but it gets uh, to the atmosphere. So it, the magnetic field obviously doesn't get everything. However, uh, UVA and UV, uh, UVB and UVC, the ones that are particularly deadly, UVA we shrug off relatively easy, but UVC is fatal, and B does all the damage that we're familiar with uh, when you know the ozone layer is missing. But uh, but none of them get through something even as simple as glass. Glass is, is a perfect protection against all the ultraviolet radiation. However, things like X-rays and, and stuff like that go straight through. Uh, how about some more bacon? Actually, that's not going to get through the stack, is it? Oh, but I got more. Okay. There you go. Here you go. Uh, you need more time. Still, I got, I got something to work with. For later. Hmm. I might have to build more of these. Oh, I've got a, I've got a ton built up now. Ooh. Migmatite. I still, I'm, I know a few minerals uh, from my rock hunting background, and yet migmatite is not one of them. I should look it up sometime. Let's get rid of this and this. That. I don't have any lapis yet. That's cool. Okay. Redstone, ammonite, salt. I suppose salt should go in with the food right there. Excellent. Those, I think, become... Yep. I had to actually save some and put them in, in frames as, like, display pieces. But I don't have an official home yet. Okay, let's make this thing we need so bad. Oops. It's not how it's done, yo. I need some more, though. Superior. Now I was just saying. I was just saying a minute ago. Let's put that away. Put that away. That I need some of. Oh, I always do that. I need to protect myself. Okay. Put these away. Migmatite, that's what it's going to look like? Okay. Well, I think it's been long enough. Uh, that's it for day 40. Beginning of a new week, folks. Oh, I'm going to do a lot of overtime in the coming weeks, uh, in part because it's needed. Uh, our servers are migrating to entire new services and entire new machines, and it's going to be a messy process. So I'm going to get the opportunity to have uh, extra time on the clock, which I need to pay down the poor cat. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll, st I'll still get my episodes in, but it's kind of good that my uh, Hello Denim series is done for the season. Uh, it will pick back up once 1.7 and mods are out, and we start the whole thing back up. But until then... Until then, I'm going to enjoy having a little bit of time off. There we go. All right. Will they let me do it? Nope, they won't. Okay. Good night, folks. Happy Mondays.